slope somewhere. The slope using the difference quotient, is that right? I remember this. Somewhere up here, slope. Oh, there we go. So at some point you would believe that slope was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, it's not like you believed it. That was definition, rise over run. And then I just rewrote our y's or f of the x values, x2, f of x1. And so after we got that slope right there, we went and substituted instead of a to B, we did T to T plus H, and we simplified our difference quotient, or our slope down to this difference quotient. You okay? Yeah, I just realized where I went wrong on one of the homework problems. Okay. I didn't recognize the number okay, as being pi, so I was typing in 3.14, not pi. Oh, P-I. So, yeah. It was a right. sine pi x. So if you're on web work, pi is pi, the Greek pi, not pie, which is the one that we eat. So web work, I think if you do pie, it'll probably think you're doing pi times the number e, maybe, oh, yeah. or maybe it won't know what you're talking about. But either way, pie, not the math pi. And if you go on the discussion set answer was on there. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll find that a lot of the questions you have on web work are probably either asked and or answered depending on how long you've waited until you get on the discussion forums. So a pretty good chance if you're going to post a question, it's already on there. And I think chapter one is pretty much done on discussion forums. So you should have gotten your one question and your one answer in already. If not, pretty much today or tomorrow, probably some of your last times to really ask or answer a question. So we're going to actually find a slope right now. So here is our example problem. Find the slope of So our function will be the 1 over x function at x equals -1 and find the tangent line to f at this point. So first of all, I didn't give a point, I gave an x value. So how do we turn an x value of negative one into a point on the graph? Plug it in. So you take negative 1 and you f it. That's all you have to do. So we got an x value. What is the y value? So I need to find. So we're going to turn into a point. So it'll look like negative 1 comma f of negative 1. Not very hard to plug in negative 1 to this function. So we have 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So there's our point, negative 1, negative 1. So I know what point it goes through. What else do I need to make a line aside from a point? Another point. I could do another point, or I could do a slope. So we're going to go with slope here. So our slope will be f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Our f of x is 1 over x. So make sure one of the hardest parts is figuring out what is f of x plus h. So f of x plus h is 1 divided by the whole quantity x plus h. Here's the most common wrong answer. 1 over x plus h separately. That is not f of x plus h right there. So do not do the most common wrong answer right there. 
So that is f of x and then a plus h at the end, not f of the quantity x plus h. So we're going to go ahead and substitute that in. So did I talk about how we simplify this or what the goal is? I think I remember. I may not have written it down. There we go. Simplify using algebra until the denominators. H is canceled. All right. So we're going to simplify until this. This is the bad guy right here. You need to simplify to cancel this H. All right, so first of all, we have fractions of fractions. So what can we do to not have fractions of fractions? By the reciprocal. So multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So our denominator is h. So easy, 1 over h is a reciprocal. So I can write it as 1 over h times 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. So I didn't do anything crazy there. Just rewrote it with, uh, without having multi-story fractions. So which h is the bad one now that needs to be canceled? Is it the x plus h, h or just the h by itself? So it's h by itself. So I need to cancel this one. There's going to be three strategies for simplifying difference quotients. I skip two letters. Simplify difference quotients. So I think we did a FOIL cancel. That was one that we already did. And if I scroll up a tiny bit. <coughs> So right here, we foiled things out and then canceled. So you could foil or multiply and then cancel. That's one strategy I'll write down. Acronym should be capitalized, I think. Foil and cancel. There's another strategy, which is multiply by conjugate over conjugate. And this is usually for square roots. So usually for square roots. And last will be uh, adding or subtracting fractions. Or I should say subtracting fractions. So we are subtracting fractions here. What do I have to do algebraically to subtract these fractions? Common denominator. So if you're a fractions expert, you don't need to write this part down, but I'm going to write it down here. So I need a common denominator. So these are pretty much the only three that you're going to need. We are going to do a difference quotient with uh, trig functions, sine and cosine. We'll use the sum difference formula for sine and cosine, but I won't have you do that. So for us, these are the only three that we're going to be using. So we don't really have anything in common. x plus h times x, that's going to be what we have in common. So how do we subtract AB minus CD? You multiply the first one by D over D minus, what do I multiply the second fraction by? B over B. B over B. And we get 
AD minus BC divided by BD, like that. So some people call that, I don't know, not really cross multiplying, but sort of is. So that's how we're adding fractions. Whatever vocabulary words you like, and that's how I'm going to be doing it. All right, do your best to simplify and cancel. Denominator's not going to get any more simple, but numerator, you could certainly cancel some things. Algebra questions. I'll use a blue marker to I cancel that x with that negative x right there. So those two canceled out. Very frequently, I see people forget that h was actually negative. So if you look carefully, there's a negative sign on the x and the h over there. So not just on the x. So it will be one, negative x and then minus h right there. So h cancels h, but one of them was negative, so you're still going to have negative 1. So everybody's OK with these algebra steps. <coughs> so this is our slope. Slope from. 1 to, or negative 1 to negative 1 plus h. So that's what we were doing right there, getting the slope from negative 1 to negative 1 plus h. Now, we can let h be 0. We're not going to be dividing by 0 anymore. So that's really important. On this previous step right here, h is 0, that's bad. But on our final step, when that h has disappeared, that h can be 0. So this is simplified. So now finally we can let h equal 0. And our final slope, we just have x times x plus 0 or x squared. So there's our slope. Now I have to evaluate. at x equals negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So our slope is negative 1 over positive 1, which is negative 1. So you have two choices. You can go y equals mx plus b, slope intercept, or you can go point slope is the other option. So there's slope intercept or point slope, which is <coughs> y minus y1 equals m <coughs> x minus x1. So which one do you want to use? Doesn't matter. I don't happen to know the y-intercept off the top of my head, so I'm going to go with the other form. It'd be pretty easy to figure out. Well, let's do a slope-intercept. We're going to use m equals negative 1 and our point. We computed earlier negative 1, negative 1. So lots of negative 1s going in there. So y is negative 1, slope's negative 1, x is negative 1, b is the only thing we don't know. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Subtract it. Negative 2 equals b. 
y equals negative x minus 2. Question for you on an earlier step. Yeah. Why did we say h equals 0? Uh, because, so what I wrote down is the slope from negative 1 to negative 1 plus h. Once you simplify your, the bad h out, you can actually basically make that to just negative 1. You can set h equal to 0. Um, so there's no other value that we would put in for h. It would always we would just get rid of it. Unless I wanted the slope from like negative 1 to 0 or something like that, like a negative 1 to a different value, which would be the secant line. So if I wanted the secant line, I would basically be using two points and a line in between. All right, I don't want to run over to the graphing utility. That will just take too long to type it all in. So I'll do a really fast graph of 1 over x. I don't care about the right part. It's going to look like that right there. But this is the 1 over x graph. And this will be negative 1, negative 1 right there. Now we computed the actual tangent line, negative x minus 2. So y intercept negative 2 and a slope of 1 should look about like that right there. So that's what our graph would look like if you used graphing utility. Would the x intercept be 2 as well? Or negative 2 as well? It would be, yes. Um, and you can figure that out. Algebraically, right here, just plug in a zero, f or no, a zero for y, and you'll get negative two for x. So you can do that algebraically also. So this will be our last example from 2.1. So I want you to find the secant line of f of x equals x squared from 2 to 3. So secant line used a uh, you do the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is going to be our slope. And then you're going to find the secant line. So use that to find B. So go ahead and do those two right now. Slightly different than what we just did. So this is a secant line. And I will go ahead and graph out what we need. Slope is 5. All right. 
What algebra did I just do right there? That was tricky. Oh, you separated. Back to three minus x out of both the So I did complete the square, or not complete the square, a difference of squares or conjugates. So that's what I did right there. You could absolutely square three, square two, et cetera, et cetera, like almost all of you did. That should work too. All right, what did you get for B? Negative seven. Negative seven. All right, math by democracy. The people have chosen B to be negative seven. All right, Y equals five X minus seven. So I do not feel good about my parabola drawing right here. So the blue marker, this obviously is not to scale. So that should be negative seven way down there. So that should be our tangent line. It'll look, not tangent, our secant line will look something like that. So it should touch. There are two points on the graph it should touch right there. Maybe I'll go and graph this using a real graphing utility as I have you do the second part. So that was a secant line. Now I want a tangent line at x equals 2. So that was for a secant line. So it was a really similar same function. So I want the tangent line of f of x equals x squared at x equals 2. So for a tangent line, we're going to use the difference quotient. And I will start you off So I'm pointing to the bad h. So you need to FOIL, uh, combine like terms, cancel that H. So go ahead and do that right now. I think it's the almost exact same steps we did the last class. So make sure you FOIL that out carefully. You should get three or four terms depending on which way you like to FOIL. So do that right now and I will plot this up on Foo plot. I have a mouse today, so I can operate, hopefully, this properly. Oh, there we go. Uh-oh. That's not good. Our slope looks pretty good. 5x minus 7, is that not... Minus six. I got minus seven. But you got minus seven? So we are gonna blame it on you. That's okay. Alright, so let's go with minus six. If at first you don't succeed, give up. <laughs> no, they don't say that. 
Minus six. All right, so it should touch in two places. Now, unfortunately, the curve of the parabola is not very steep. So it's going to be a little tricky to actually see. I know the two x values it should hit, which is 2. So if I zoom way in, hopefully you can see they're both touching right there at x value 2. And then, unfortunately, they're very close together right here, but they should touch again at x value 3 right there. So we can see they're touching again at 3. And I think they even let us choose a different color. Let's go blue. Did it make it blue? There we go. We'll make the other one. All right. Anybody feel good about their tangent line? I got 2x plus h. 2x plus h. So let's go back. Um, we got to plug in uh, either point. Now, I didn't actually give a point, so one point could be 2 comma 2 squared, which is 4. The other point would be 3 comma 3 squared, which is 9. So we got whichever, we have to choose one of the two points. So if I go with the 2, 4, because the numbers are smaller. Now, we don't know B yet. And then subtract 10. And I could have done 3 and 9 instead. Should have gotten the same result. So I used 2, 3 as the point. Oh, that's not good. That was a price. So your line went through the point 2, 3. The problem was that point was not on a graph. Okay. So you had the right slope, but the line was in the wrong position. Thank you. <coughs> All right, so we're going to get x squared plus xh plus xh, 2xh, plus h squared minus our original x squared divided by h. So x squared cancels x squared. That's good. Now, you could cancel some h's, but I strongly recommend that you factor your h first to make sure that you cancel exactly the right stuff. So x squared minus x squared, that's easy to cancel. And then I'm left with 2hx plus h squared, factor out h, canceling the other h. From here, the bad h disappeared. So now I can let h equal 0 at this point. I'm going to let h equal 0. And we get our slope. So now I'm going to plug in what x value at x equals 2. So we got the x equals 2 right there. That's x equals 2. We get slope equals 2 times 2, which is 4. What point are we going through? x equals 2, so we're going through 2 comma f of 2. So if take 2 and f it, that's easy to do. Our function just squares it. So we're going through 2, 4. So almost the exact same line we got last time. The slope's just a little bit off. So we're going to plug in 2, 4 now. 4 is y. x is 2. So we get 8. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4 is b. So our line, y equals 4x minus 4. And we could jump back over. So 4x minus 4 is our line.
cross over uh, They should both be going through the point 0.24. So everybody, in fact, all three parts of the graph go through that point. So there's a lot happening. Um, and because of that, let me turn off this function here. That probably is the easiest way. It should not appear. All right, so if I zoom in, if I zoom in super far, you can't tell the difference between the black and the purple. So the black's the original curve, the parabola, the purple is our tangent line. So I have to scroll in really far to see that they're pretty much exactly the same. So now we're going to scroll back out, if I can. I scrolled in really, really, really far. Now you can see them start to separate. But you have to zoom out pretty far before they really start to separate quite a bit. So there, we hit the graph at 2, 4, but we don't necessarily touch the graph at other points in between, or nearby. So we just hit at one point. Whereas our secant line, we'll turn that one back on. Our secant line explicitly hits the graph at two points. And you can see one point right up here, which I can't really mark. And then the other point is where everybody hits down here. Is the blue on the inside of that one of the problem? Yes. Okay. I probably should have done between one and two so the parabola wasn't so, uh, so the curvature was higher. So that's the end of rate of change. So what that means, I could give you a rate of change quiz Wednesday. It would be a good day. So I need to also open up your homework. So I'll do that as soon as I can after class. Yes, Thursday, as I was saying. So Thursday could be uh, your 2.1 quiz. And of course, I haven't quizzed you on trig yet. So there's a good chance I'll put trig on your quiz as well in some form. So this section is all about limits. Is in tight. And we'll start with an example here. So we're starting with a question, which is how does this function, x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1, behave near but not at x equals 1? So first of all, why is x equal 1 an important value for this function? It would be divided by 0. It would be undefined. So that's the reason we're looking at x equals 1. So the question is what happens at near x equals 1? So what factoring can you do in the numerator? x squared minus 1. x plus 1 so would be 1. Is there a difference of squares or conjugates? So it's x minus 1 times x plus 1. And what can I do here? Cancel out the x minus 1. Cancel out. So until now, you would be OK looking at this and saying, yes, definitely. So what happens on the left here if x equals 1, we said it was undefined on the left side?
So when x equals 1, what is x plus 1? 2. 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. All right, is 2 undefined? No. Nope, sure isn't. So something I just wrote down is not correct. Uh, no, we canceled the x minus 1, x minus 1. So it came, the problem came in when we canceled x minus 1 with x minus 1. So let's zoom in more carefully on this equal sign right here. So the real question is, are these actually equal? And let me uncross out those. What x values are these not equal? x equals 1. They're not the same thing. So they're equal when x is not 1. So they're not always the same value. We just saw when x equals 1, we got 2 on the right and undefined on the left. So they're not actually equal for all x values. Now if x is not 1, I will not have undefined. If x is not 1, these two, in fact, cancel out. So as long as x is not 1, they're exactly the same thing. Can you graph x plus 1? Yes, you better be able to graph y equals x plus 1. So go ahead and do that. So this is a very easy function to graph. That's what your graph should look like. So that is a graph of y equals x plus 1. However, what I want to do is make this graph, modify the graph, so that it's actually the graph of x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. So it's exactly the same graph. The only thing I have to do is remove the undefined point. So what point, what x value are we undefined? It'll be x value of 1. So it'll be right here at 1, 2. We're going to go and erase. So what I need to do is show that we're skipping that point. So what you do is you basically cut a hole in the graph. So you take your line, you just cut out a hole right in it. So there's our removed point. So this right here, once we've removed this point, we've actually graphed the original y equals x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. That's the graph we just made right here, because we took out the correct point out of the graph. So again, this is not something that you probably ever thought about before. You just cancel stuff and everything worked out OK. So you could say the graph of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is the same as the graph of x plus 1. You just have to remove one single point. So it's almost the exact same function, just one point removed. Uh, 
Um, if you were to write that in like interval notation, you'd write it just like you would the domain. So I could write the domain pretty easily, negative infinity to positive one, union, one to infinity. Okay. The range would be similar, except you'd use two as the y value you're not using in your range. Right. <coughs> so I can write down when x is not one, behaves exactly like g of x is x plus 1. So it's almost the exact same function. There's just an undefined, there's a hole cut in the graph of f that's not in g. So what we're going to do now is zoom in on to that point we just cut in the graph right there. So we're going to look super carefully at that point right there. Draw that a little bit bigger. That's one, two. There's a hole there. And of course, the graph goes both directions, uh, infinitely far, like that. When is the denominator x plus one? Did we change that? Uh oh. Should be x minus one, huh? Yep. I want to make sure you're paying attention. Nope, should definitely be the same. All right, we could make table of values. So what is, so I cannot use one, so that's out. So let me go ahead and cross that out. That's undefined. Well, I shouldn't even write two over there. I should write undefined. So what's a number slightly bigger than one? That's easy to write down. So let's do um, let's do 1.1, 1.01, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1
So that's how you can remember if there's a negative in the exponent where the exponent should be, that means from the left. In this case, positive from the right or from positive land. So you can say as x approaches 1, y approaches 2. You can zoom way in and you can see that happening. What happens if uh, we're on the curve and we're going towards an x value of 1? That means we're moving this direction right here. That's relatively hard to see, but we're moving down, down to the left, down towards 2. So as, y, as x goes towards 1, y is going to go towards 2. And we write that down in calculus notation right here. As x approaches 1 from the positive side, y approaches 2. And the arrow right here means approaches. So as x approaches 1 from the positive side, y approaches 2. So we're going to make another statement. As x approaches, now we're going to go 1 from negative land. All right, one from negative land. So we're approaching one now on the left side. If we zoom into our curve, what happens when x is getting closer to one? We're on the curve, we're going up to the right here. What y value are we gonna be approaching? Also 2. So either, either way, we're approaching 2. So as x approaches 1, and that negative means from negative land. Or from the left. All right, I know positive land and negative land are silly words. Just think negative land is like the opposite of Disneyland. <laughs> Somebody got eaten by an alligator at Disneyland, right? Yeah. So maybe it's not purely positive land. <laughs> well, he is positively eaten. Eat. There's a happy alligator, though. Yeah. <laughs> Free range. All right, too soon. No joking about that. <laughs> no, it's never too soon.